Hello and welcome to Heal Yourself Therapies. Here I'm in the house today and because I want to talk about something very serious. Today we're going to talk about the truth. And when I say the truth, I'm not talking about the Jehovah's Witness belief system. That's something completely different. I'm talking about the truth. I'll see you in the next part. The truth's a funny thing. The truth is something that we all long to know, don't we? We all long to know the truth of the matter. We want to get to the bottom of this and find out the truth. We like to talk about finding out the truth. The issue that we have is that even in in the um, experiments that they've done based on, on trying to discover the truth of the matter. What they've found is that that we are not capable of seeing the truth. Literally, we do not have the capacity. The reason for that is that when we take in information, we have filters in our mind, and our mind, we have a thing called the reticular activating system in our mind, and what happens is our mind filters the information that comes in to such a degree that they've found that 80% of what comes in, we invent, right? So we get some information and of that information, we invent 80% of it and only 20% of it is pretty much the truth, right? The truth of what came in, that's not saying that what came in was true, if you understand, but it's actually uh, pertains to the information that entered. Only. 20%. We invent, our mind invents 80% of what? Everything that comes in. So imagine that, that that comes into you and then you share that with somebody else. So you were sharing 80% of falsehood and only 20% of the truth. But here comes the, the, the thing, right? As somebody listens to our 20% of truth, they filter that and only 20% of the 20% is then taken in as true, and they invent 80% of that. So that's what the, that's what Chinese whispers is all about. When you pass on the information, people are then filtering, and so all, it only needs to pass on to two or three people, and suddenly there is no truth. And that is even if what first came in was true. But if what came in was wrong, then even that wrong has changed by the time that two or three people have shared the information. Does that make sense? So, right, so that I, I want to work on the premise that there we are not able to know the truth, right? And that's it. Not our job. It's not our job. We don't need to worry about it. However, that brings me to this very, very wonderful thing that somebody once said to me and it stuck with me and I use it and I measure my life against it. And this is surround yourself with people who were searching for the truth and flee from those who were found it. When I first heard that, I couldn't quite get my head around it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Run away from people who found the truth. Well, it's exactly because of the reason that I've told you that we are not capable of knowing the truth. We don't have that capacity. When somebody says that they have the truth, you need to be extremely worried. You need to be extremely cautious because that is not true, okay? However, when somebody says, I'm searching for the truth, you put yourself shoulder to shoulder with them. Why? Because that is our job, is the searching. We've got to find our own truth, right? There is more than one truth in this world. We all have our own truths, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying that in a moment, but there is more than one truth. I believe that there is a fundamental truth at source. Source is the fundamental truth, but that is not for us to know. We're not able to know that, okay? So, let me tell you a story, however. Let me tell you a story. This man was walking along the street and he saw a shop that he'd never seen before, a store, and on it it put the shop of the truth. Okay, the store of the truth. And he thought, that's really strange. And so he walked in and he, he went up to the counter and he said, 
I've just come in to see, I'm curious, what, what is it that you sell? And the man said, well, it's what it says on the sign. We sell the truth. He said, really? The truth? He said, yeah, yeah, we sell the truth here. And the man said, so, so, well, what have you got to offer? You know, what would you mean by the truth? And the guy said, well, the owner of the shop said, well, you have a choice. We have three kinds of truth here that you can have. And he said, the first is the um, partial truth. And he said, the partial truth, if you take the partial truth with you today, he said, you'll have something to use as a reference. It will um, enhance your life, but nothing will really change. Okay. And the guy said, okay, well, it doesn't sound very interesting to me, that you know, partial truth. He said, well, what's, what, what else is there available? And the guy said, okay, so well, we also sell the half truth. And he said, now, if you take the half truth, it's going to change your life. But you'll never, ever feel that you actually understand things fully. And so you may spend your life confused sometimes or, or a little bit kind of um, unbalanced. And the guy said, oh, I'm not, not really interested in that. It doesn't sound very appetizing to me. He said, so what else have you got? And the guy said, oh, well, we've got the full truth. This is the full truth. He said, well, right. He said, I'll have that. That's what I want. That's what I've come in to, to get. And the, the owner said, well, before I give you the full truth, I need to give you a disclaimer. I need to give you a warning. And he said, if you go out of this shop with the full truth, your life will never be the same again. You will have nowhere to rest your head ever again. Life will never, ever return to the life that you've got now. And you will be uncomfortable for the rest of your life. And the man said, that's too much of a commitment. That's too much for me. I don't want my life to change. And so he said, I'll, I'll, I'll just have the partial truth if you don't mind. And the man sold him the partial truth, which was free. All of the truths were free. He sold them it. And the man walked out of the shop with the partial truth, feeling slightly disappointed, but safe. And this is where we are now. This is where we are. Although I am saying that truth, we are not capable of knowing the truth. We are capable of knowing our truth, our truth. This is very important. You see, this is what it's all about, is having your truth and understanding your truth. And when you understand your truth, when you wake up, when you wake up out of the slumber, out of the spell, you are given the full truth, your full truth. And when you take that full truth, and all of, all of you who are listening, who have woken up and who have found your full truth, you know that life is never the same again. You can never return back to the life that you had before, and you were always uncomfortable with everything that's happening because you know that where we are is not the right place. And that is why the people who have woken up are constantly in motion. They are constantly doing, helping, trying to fix, trying to resolve, trying to get the message out, trying to wake others up. Yeah. And many people have said, I wonder if I went back, if I had the choice of waking up or not, I wonder if I would take it knowing what I know now about how difficult it is once you've woken up. So that's where everybody is at the moment, is standing in the shop of the truth, looking at what's available and making a decision on what they want. So I was talking with the emissaries um, in, a, in a recent meditation and I asked them this question because I'm interested in, in understanding what the heck is going on. And I said to them, why is it that I see so many people who have woken up and yet so many people have different opinions on things? They seem to have a different truth. And I don't understand why, if they're waking up, why don't we all have one truth? Why is it that we're all different? And they said this. In fact, it wasn't so much a saying as a showing, they showed me this. 
The idea is this, that when we wake up, when we wake up, really what it's like is we, we turn our face away from the darkness and we turn to the light, okay, to source, to the divine. So what they were showing me were everybody on their own path, on their specific path, in their specific truth. But because we've turned to face the light, our path is illuminated. All of our paths are illuminated because we're facing the truth. We're not in the path of truth. We're not, we don't have the truth. We are facing the truth. And the truth is illuminating our path. And so what we are doing is we erroneously believe that we must have found the truth because we're seeing light on our path. It looks right, it resonates with us. So all that we're saying was that we're all heading toward the truth. This is our ultimate goal is return to source and to join and to find out the truth. Can you imagine how wonderful it's going to be when we actually find out the whole truth? It's going to be, mwah, makes me, ex I feel tingly thinking about it. But what they were saying was we mustn't be fooled into thinking that our beliefs and our path is the one and only right path. Which is, which is a beautiful idea and it's not a new one, which is we all have our own paths and we, we all need to allow space for other people to have their paths. And that applies to those who haven't woken up as well. Everybody has their path. Everybody has their purpose. And so all that we do is we focus on the one truth, which is that we are all returning to light to source and so that unites us because we're all heading in the same direction we're just on slightly different paths but every path is illuminated if you're facing in the right direction okay so that's what they said and i thought that was that was beautiful that yes and, and, and that's it's why it's so important not to take yourself too seriously not to take your beliefs too seriously not to hang your hat on your belief and my belief only. And this is where the error has come in these old archaic religious structures that have been sold to us to really to take us away from God. In, in my book, that's what I believe. This is my, on my path. I believe that they came to take us away from God. They were set up to take us away from God. Yeah. Um, and that's why they've all had horrible starts. All religions, if you if you look back into the history, they all have horrible starts. You know, uh, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses were started by a 33 degree Mason. All right, now we know about them. The, the Catholic Church was set up um, by selling entrance into heaven, selling them. Okay, that's how they started to get the money that would sell entry tickets into heaven. Is that any way to start a religion? The, the, the Church of England was started because Henry VIII wanted to get married again and he was killing his wives and, he, and the church wouldn't allow him to do it. So he started his own so he could kill his wives and get new ones. Yeah, is that any way to start a religion? And Look back in all of them. They've all got really dodgy beginnings. Look at the, 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 the Mormons and, uh, and, and look at how, how the, the Book of Mormon was, was written with him filling his hat with stones and sticking his head in a, in a, in a, in a hat and he's seeing stones. Look, all of them have very weird beginnings and all religions are there, I believe, to take you away from God by telling you that this is the only path. When you hear that, when you hear somebody saying the only way to God is through Jesus, the only way to God is through Muhammad, the only way to God is uh, through study, through the Bible, through um, uh, giving your life to Jesus, through um, being born again, right? As soon as somebody starts putting rules on how you can be saved, you should be very, very, very concerned about that. That isn't the way. It's our path 
and just head to the light, head to the light. So if there is no truth, or if the truth is not in our concept, if we aren't able to, to understand the truth because of the weird way that we were set up, what's the point in talking about it? Why talk about it? Okay? And so I finished with a story of the maestro was, was there with his disciples and his disciples said to him, why is it that you say that we can't understand God? God is un not understandable. We can't um, put him inside of, a, of a, a paradigm. He's completely outside of our ken, our understanding. And they said, so if that's the case, why do you talk about him? And the maestro said, well, look in that tree and listen to the bird. Why does the bird sing? And the bird sings not because it has a message to give. It sings because it has a song to sing. Okay, and that's what we've got. We've got a song to sing. We've got something to share. And our message is, we're facing the light, we're heading to the light, we're illuminated. And so are you, and so are you, and so are you. And every path is gonna lead us to the same place. Every path ends up in the same place. That's great, the best news ever. Even the people who are walking in the wrong direction will still end up at source. Okay, so there you are. That's my take on the truth, believe it or not. <laughs>